Hey guys, my name is Hashem Mohamed and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we'll be learning how to create a website that allows people to input dynamic data into the form and we're going to populate the data coming from the form into a collection list inside the database of our web application. So if you don't know what Webflow is, basically it allows users to create dynamic data driven websites without absolutely any coding knowledge required so um, it's being used by a lot of professionals and, and they normally use something called bubble.is and maybe you've heard of it and instead of that we're going to use something called webflow and i did talk about the comparisons of webflow and bubble.is in the previous video so if you're interested please go check that out anyways without any further ado um, let's go ahead and check out what I, did. what I did before I began this video is I created a very uh, I created a, a website and I chose a template here and actually I did not create any of these data it actually comes with the template okay and in the CMS which basically is where the database is um, there are some a lot of categories team members posts tags codes and a lot of things okay and we'll also have a lot of pages which we're not going to delve into but the only thing we're interested in is the CMS collection because actually this is where the data is residing although this is actually in the database users cannot access this where users can see is only the content itself and here is actually the content that is being popular from the database itself what we're going to do is in this example I chose a template here for absolutely no reason at all. Actually, I shouldn't have chosen a template like this. All this is rubbish, to be honest with you, for what we're going to do. In this video tutorial, we'll be creating a, um, a form that allows users to submit codes, okay? Basically, author of the code and the code itself. And when they're going to submit it, um, it's going to take, uh, it's going to display all the codes that people submitted. Now, I created an example code here. I'm sorry, yeah, example uh, thing here that we're going to do. But it's basically, I'm going to redo the same thing again, just so you know how to do this, okay? So the first thing you want to do is on the CMS collection, this is really the part that, the heart of where all the data resides. The only thing I'm going to deal with is something called codes, and it basically has two fields inside this data set. One is the name or the author of the person, and one is the author itself, okay? And it's going to automatically keep track of when the data was created, edited, published, and all of that by itself. So if you want to create a new collection like this, you can just, you can just go ahead and click on this new button. And basically, if you want, you can, of course, add your own fields, uh, slug or the URL, and then the collection name, which is what is the kind of data that you're saving. So you can click on any of these and then... That will basically, I mean, if you can choose any of these templates, that will just make your work a lot faster, okay? So, for now, I'm not going to, oops, uh, choose any of these. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to be um, using codes, which is something that I already created. If you want, you can also create an, a form that allows people to submit post or something like that. Uh, in this case, here we have a very simple example. What I did is I basically, on the Elements panel, I added a form block, which is over here, okay? Just drag and drop it here, right? I'll, okay, I did have two forms that cannot be submitted, but yeah. So what I did is I, again, let me do it again. Um, where is that? Where? Here, okay? Now, you have to, it's very important is you have to give the form a name and something that is quite recognizable at least okay and then of course you can change the, the fields okay this is also pretty important maybe not the instructions because that's not going to be really useful for us well, we, what you really need to do is is the name of the fields but actually we're going to use another third party service called Zapier because um, basically Webflow ups Webflow does not allow users to collect submissions from within Webflow form 
and then populate it there. It's kind of shame, but what what what, it, what Webflow does is basically it ex it exposes API. Now, basically, API is what is used to interact between one one web service with another web service or one app web application with another web application. So, um, basically, Webflow just exposes the API for your website. Okay, that's all it does, and it. it in working with APIs, if you're not a developer, is kind of really hard. So Zapier makes it a lot fun and easy. You don't really need to know any coding. All you have to do is it, it's, it's just like something like IFTTT or, um, you know, it's just like a recipe, okay? And if, for example, uh, if I post a new Facebook post, then you should automatically post it on Instagram, maybe. Or something like that. You can, of course... Um, create recipes like that and integrate with any number of services okay so that's what it is and webflow is also one of the services here basically we're to in today's example uh, we're not going to be integrating with any other web service basically what we're going to do is we're going to integrate our web webflow forms to the webflow CMS that's what we're going to do okay so first of all, give all both of these names a field. In this case, I have actually added them myself. So I named this as the author, and this one as the code description. Okay, I'm not going to like. Okay, I'm going to cut this off because I don't need it. And the second thing we're going to display is the actual content itself. To display the content here, we're going to use something called collection list. Okay, and let me put this here for example. And you need to bind this to a data set in the database or a CMS. So we're going to define the source as, um, in this case, let's define the source as coach. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is, um, as you can see here on the purple, it says here that the coach, Steve Jobs, that's basically one of the coach that I have. So it actually duplicates the, it shows you a live example or live preview of all the data that is, there are inside your database. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do now next is um, is we're going to fetch um, the first the code description and the author separately. So in order to do that, we're going to add two different UI elements. The first thing we want to add is the code itself. This is a static element. It basically just says heading. But what we want to do is, since this is inside a collection list, we want to get the value of the field name. That's the person who said it. And this is basically the actual code itself. Now, right below that, let's add the person uh, who said this code. Okay? Name. So that's it. And how many ever codes you add from here, that will actually be reflected there. So let's say in this case, um, Spider-Man, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, what was the thing, what's up, danger, now, this is just to, like, show you, and once that's published, you can see it over here, okay, so, automatically the data is published here, okay, now what we're going to do, is instead of collecting it from here we're going to actually do it from there so you need to go to a website called zapier.com the link will be in the description for both of these services again yeah <laughs> so uh what we're going to do is uh, first you need to log in okay and if you like the way it works is like you can have something called recipes if you can collect data from here and put the data into another place but let's say for example you want to um do multiple things like getting a data and posting into two or three two or three places or getting data from two different places combining them and then sending it if you want to do more than two operations you need to get the pro version which i think costs like it shouldn't be something more than twenty dollars per month i don't know exact cost but you can of course check out the pricing page for it um but in for this example you don't need it Go ahead and just create a free account and click on this button called Make a Zap. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to search for Webflow in this case, and 
the thing we're interested in is farm submissions. Okay. Uh, the first thing you need to define is a trigger itself, which is basically oh um the next thing you want to do is you want to connect to an account and and what you want to do is um authorize your webflow account okay in my case i have already done it so i'm just going to go ahead and click on save and continue i'm going to get define the website that i'm working with so in this case it's news biased some stupid website in in order for this functionality to work okay very important thing is you need to publish this website okay and it's not about publishing a website actually it's because you actually need to submit one example form okay i'm sorry one example submission and i'll tell you what i mean um just go to this website here again okay and and you can just type in anything you want all right submit and that's just what is required okay you need to give one submission because zapier will recognize that afterwards so as you can see here my form was called a uh, code submission if you want to check that out here it, it, it's very important that you give a very nice form name that's because it's easily recognizable on zapier so once you do that um now you can click on continue and you can get some examples if you want and let's go ahead and uh, put it over there now instead of like checking it out let's go ahead and finish the whole thing up now so action search so we got the data from the form and now we're going to put it onto the CMS the way we do that is go to webflow and over here it says create a new item okay so basically we're going to create a new collection item and again this is my webflow account and <clears throat> so uh, the website I'm working with is news biased and the collection is coach now I'm gonna plug in the value of the coat that's coming from the form and the coat is the value of data and as you can see here code description so that's an example of a code there okay and the name is the data author okay that's the thing and the other stuff I would just leave it like this okay oh shit archived by the way I did forget to say is archived is uh, I think we don't need to archive it of course because when you add when you get the data then uh, basically it will be like it will be archived which we don't need to we don't need approval process but if you want that you can do that okay one of the ways you can, uh, for example, you want to collect guest post and then you want to moderate it, you can actually have a check on the data set like the Webflow collection. And uh, you can create a field that says published question mark. And by default, it will be no. So um, every data that every submission that goes into the form will have the, the published data set as I mean the published value as false so once you go into the once the administrator which is you maybe goes into the webflow CMS and once you want to prove it you just go say yes so that will now be displayed on the thing so you can add that filter on the collection list I don't know if it makes sense but yeah so in this case draft is no so I'll go ahead and click on continue these are some example stuff let's go ahead and send a test here and uh, check let's check the codes out okay let's go and refresh this there you go so you have the code there and uh, if you go down I think you can see there so let's go ahead and uh, like refresh this page up here so let me go ahead and add it add an author like and then he says something submit and when I refresh this page like hold on a second so okay it looks like oh by the way that's just an example I need to like enable this Zapier so I want to enable this now once I enable this um 
That's it. You can just name it anything you want. Now yeah, I think it will work actually. I'm sorry. Like let's go ahead and call this um uh, um Bill Gates and I'll call this test and click on submit. And let's go ahead and refresh this page and check it out. Okay, it's not showing up here. What's happening? Oh yeah, there you go. We got the data here called Bill Gates. And uh, actually it shows over here. Um, it should be reflected here. Like, let's go ahead and publish this now. You actually don't need to publish this every time. I don't. I don't know why it's showing that way. So that is it, pretty much. So if you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, and um, and um, and I shall see you guys in another video very soon.